Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part six of my Python How to Program tutorial. Today, we're going to cover object oriented programming in Python. Of course, I'm going to cover classes, which are blueprints you use to create objects, and as well, going to cover inheritance and polymorphism. How you create a class that you will create objects from in Python is to type class and then the name of said class. Then I'm going to define a method. We previously referred to them as functions, but here inside of classes they're referred to as methods. And this is a special method that's job is to initialize or construct the object. This is a function that's going to be called every single time you create a new object. By default, I'm going to force the person to give the animal a name, and I'm not French, or <laughs> they will get the default name, no name. And here again, with this underscore, I'm denoting that I want this variable to only be changed by functions that lie within the class. You're going to see those functions or methods here in a minute. And the reference to self is a reference to the object you're creating. So whenever you create a new object, that object is actually passed here, and then variables within that object are played around with. In this case, we're setting the variable name to the name that was passed or no name. And here is the function that is called whenever you want to change the name for the object. And again, we're going to call it, put a default in here. Remember, this is always good because it helps you to avoid errors. And there we go. Now, if you want to retrieve that name, we are going to use, and I'm using set and get because these are common things to use. I'm going to show you a shortcut here in a minute. But what get will do will return the value that is stored in a variable name. And that's what that guy does. And what we do, we do all of this to, this is called encapsulation, to protect variable names so that they're not accidentally set somewhere in code and then unset and set to something else. It becomes confusing. So if you keep everything so that you can only set the variable name by calling this function, it makes your code more understandable. Now, of course, every animal is gonna make some sort of noise. And what I'm gonna do here is just simply define a noise that animals will get by default. Animals will also move, so provide a default. That's all you're doing whenever you're creating these classes is providing all the defaults. Okay, and let's just say every animal has to eat. I'll just say crunch crunch. Okay, so I defined all the methods inside of the class. Let's create an object that we're going to call dog. Let's call the constructor function for that animal class. And let's call our dog puppy to be original. And then also let's have our puppy make some noises and move and eat. And if we print, run this function, you can see er moving forward, crunch, crunch. That's these methods being run. Now if we go in here, to Jake and then use the function get name to retrieve that new name that we set. See that? Just copy this and paste and then run it. And you can see er moving forward crunch crunch puppy because that was the original name I gave it when I created this object. And then you see Jake because I set the new name to Jake and then retrieved that new name. Well, this is kind of limiting though, this, this overall class, because we only have one variable that is set that the user can use. And of course, they may want to set additional names. Well, there's a workaround with that inside of Python. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna allow them to pass an unlimited number of key valued pairs or dictionaries. And how we do that in the initialization method that we have here is by designating this, this keyword. Whenever we use this, this tells Python the to expect an unlimited number of dictionaries to be passed to it. Kind of like this signified to Python that we were going to send an unlimited number of variables to regular functions. Okay, and instead of name, we're not going to tie ourselves down. We're going to instead give it a name like attributes because it's going to be an unlimited number of potential values that they can send to this class. Now, you know, might not want to do this, but this is a nice workaround that gives you an immense amount of flexibility. Now, this changed from names, so we're going to want to change that to attributes. And this is a common thing that is used in advanced Python. You're not always going to see it, especially but not by somebody that's very new to Python, but 
I think you can imagine the flexibility that it provides you. And then we just put in attributes again, value, and the key for this is going to be the word key. If you want to retrieve, all you have to do is pass the key to the get attributes function, and it'll return attributes dot get key and then we'll put a default inside of there. And then if we come back down here, and instead of name here, put attributes in, and attributes here, and instead of this set function here, we're gonna put attributes inside of this guy as well. And let's put in here feet. And let's say that this dog had a horrible accident, and <laughs> let's put the value of three inside of there. So what we got here is we are going to run the same functions as we used previously. We're going to assign the key name to the value of puppy. We are going to retrieve value stored in the key name. We are setting the number of feet because now we can define an unlimited number of key valued pairs and within our class. I'm going to create a new key valued pair using the key feet and the value being three and then we are going to retrieve feet from the class. And if we run that, you can see that's exactly what it did. Printed out the, two, the three methods that we had previously. Here it retrieves the name, and here it's going to retrieve the number of feet that we set right there. So that is a extremely flexible ability you can add to your classes. And now we will move on to inheritance. Basically we don't need to change anything up here inside the class. Let's delete this information out of here though and let's come down here and basically delete all of this information. Okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new class that is going to inherit all of the methods and variables that are found in the animal class and we're gonna call this class dog. And how you inherit is you make reference to the animal class that you are inheriting from. And here we are going to overwrite the noise function and replace it with a noise that the dog would more than likely make. Woof woof, okay? But let's say we also wanted to keep this noise, the default noise, and be able to access it. Well you can access all of the methods in the super class being the animal class that was that was inherited from by just referencing with it with the the super function and the method you would like to call and then if we come down here and instead create a dog object do that in the same way we created an animal object before and if we say print Call the noise method that we have here. And we're going to also call a, another function that we didn't define in the dog class. And this is, in essence, what it is inheritance. And if we run it, you can see here that we're going to print out wolf, wolf, and er, just like we have defined here. And then we're going to print out moving forward, which is what the move function or move method does in the original class animal. Even though we don't have move, which is right here in the original animal class, we do not define it in the inherited dog class that we created from the animal class. So that is basically how inheritance works. You can overwrite that which you want to change Remember, you can still make reference to methods back inside of the parent or super class, in this case being animal, in this way. And you can also overwrite any method that you want to replace inside of this new class. So that's inherited classes and inheritance in general. Now what I'm going to do is explain to you exactly what polymorphism is. Okay, so we created, let's get rid of this guy again. We created up here a class named dog. Well, another thing that is an animal is a cat. So we're gonna create, whoops, another 
class called cat and we are going to define a different noise that the cat makes and in this case we're going to print meow and we're going to get rid of this just to get rid of it. Okay, so we've defined dog, we've overwritten the default noise, but we kept all of the other methods of animal. And here we, def we overwrote the method noise for the new cat class as well. Now, in the program itself, this is not inside of any of the classes, we're going to create a new function called talk to me. And what it is going to do is it's going to receive any objects that are of the type animal. Whenever it does, it is going to run the method noise. Okay, This is polymorphism that we're talking about. Really complicated word that really should not be complicated. Then in the real program part, again, outside of classes, outside of functions, we're going to create a new object of type class dog. And we're going to create another one, a new cat object, type cat. So we got that there as well. And now we're going to pass to our function talk to me, Sophie, our new cat, just to see what happens whenever we pass. See, it's expecting an animal object, but we're passing it a cat object. What is going to happen? See, it still prints out meow, and it's still going to print even though this method is not defined inside of the cat class. Here's the cat class in totality. It only has one method, noise. So it's going to overwrite the method in the animal class with its own method name noise, but it's going to retain all of the methods from the animal class that it did not overwrite. And what polymorphism is, is that Python is smart enough to know that when you pass it, even though it's a cat object, that the cat object is still an animal object. And it's smart enough to say, okay, basically what happens is it goes, this is a cat object, which originally was an animal object. Does this new cat object have a method of type noise? Yes, it does. Great. Fire that off. Then it comes down to animal.eat. What the interpreter says is, does the new cat object have a method that overwrites our eat method? It says no. It says fine, treat it as an animal. That is polymorphism. That is what that gigantic complicated word means. So that's basically it. That's object-oriented programming. I showed you some of the most complicated things to think about specific to Python, but this is true. This is still inheritance. This is still polymorphism in every other language. So it's you can use this information uh, for other languages as well because any object-oriented programming language pretty much works in the same way. Polymorphism is polymorphism. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And if not, till next time.